All right, everybody, I'm, I'm back. I'm going to continue and finally wrap up my uh, do-it-yourself CO2 system for the aquarium plants. Um, here's some of the things I use. You may, may not need to use all these. You can take what you like of it and tailor it to fit your own needs, but this is the stuff I use. Um, for tools, you're going to need a drill, drill bits. Um, this little gauge here is a pretty good thing to use. Um, Two-part epoxy, scissors, some snips, um, popsicle sticks to stir up your epoxy, rubber gloves. Um, you don't want the epoxy on your hands. It's a sticky mess. A um, little screwdriver. I'm going to use this as a center punch. I can't find mine. A block of wood to drill through. Um, now as far as the other things you're going to need is a jar. I like the uh, glass mason jars just because they can't expand or contract. Um, metal lid, um, airline tubing. Oh, we're gonna need some tape too. Air stones. Um, here's the the rigid, rigid airline tubing. Um, it's kind of hard to find this stuff anymore because they were used in undergrowth filters, which are hard to come by now. Um, when when you find some, if you get a couple of them because you never know if you're going to be able to find them later. Um, airline connector kit. Um, I used to use a set that came just with like the air stones and there was little plastic pieces on it and that was enough but once again these air things are getting harder and harder to come by. Um, check valves. I used two of them in my system and you're going to need a delivery system. If you have a sump um, you can actually use the return pump as the delivery system and that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to show you how to do that. Or you can use an internal system, um, some type of power head or a pump that has a ventry valve on it, which is this. It actually sucks the air down through and mixes it with the water and pumps it throughout the system. And what you do not want to use is a really powerful one because it'll suck too hard and actually suck stuff through the system. You don't want that because this is not a high pressure system. It's just low pressure. Um, so you don't want anything to really suck it through. You want to actually supply it with the air, if that makes any sense to you. Um, this is not the system I'm using, but I'll touch bases with it as we get to that point. So. As of now, I'm going to go ahead and set up the tripod, and uh, we'll go from there. All right. Okay, time to get started. Um, first off, we're going to start with drilling the holes in the cap of the uh, CO2 bottle and in the jar lid, which is your bubble counter. Um, it's also your, I guess, your safety catch in case your bottle overflows with the yeast. This way it won't go into your aquarium. So what we're going to do is you've got to best try to match the drill bit to the size hole you need. Um, and we're going to use, um, usually I just stuck the rigged thing through the plastic, but it tends to kink. So I'm using this airline kit that has these elbows. I guess they're actually valves with a 90 degree. Um, so we're going to go with that size hole. And I use my little uh, gauge here. It tells me that these are... Uh, 1364ths. Um, it's a pretty snug fit, but you don't want it to be loose. So that's what we're going to start with. So we're going to need one in your cap. So we're just going to put a little dot where we want it, and then we're going to need two in this jar lid. Now we don't want it too close to the edge to be hitting and we don't want them right next to each other. So go ahead and mark, put it in the ring so that you can uh, see how far you can go in. And we're just going to put two marks on there. Just like that. Okay, so with that. Now this is what the block of wood is for so that we don't actually drill into our table. Right in the center of this. You don't have to push too hard, just let the uh, drill do the work. Make sure it's gone through that little plastic, it's kind of your seal. Try not to damage that. We need this seal inside here that helps make the uh, proper seal in, in the bottle. 
Now with the cap, the lid here, we need actually, I would use a center punch, but I can't find mine, so I'm using this little Phillips screwdriver. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know it's not the right tool for the job, but it will work. What I want to do is just make a dent so that the uh, drill bit has somewhere to go. If you don't, your drill bit's just going to wander off. So this will help get it started. have the holes drilled. Um, next thing we have to do is mix our epoxy. And I'm not going to bore you with all the details on that. It's going to take time. So I got my two-part epoxy. I did spend the extra money one time and used marine epoxy. Um, it didn't seem to work any better than these. And it actually takes a lot longer to cure than these do. So I'm going to stick with my little five minute epoxy. I haven't had any troubles with it before as far as toxic toxicity or whatever. So you're going to want to use your gloves for this. Do it as quick as possible here. And you need to use equal amounts of the resin and the hardener. Um, try not to mix them up course and try not to mix your caps up when you go to put them back on because if you have some hardener on the cap and you put it onto the epoxy cap you're not going to get it off and uh, it's easy to remember on this one because the blue is the hardener kind of like a little blue pill <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and use equal amounts you don't really need a whole lot this is my little epoxy puddle thing all right, like I said, you don't want to use a whole lot. Okay, equal amounts, hardener, resin. Now it pops up. I'm going to mix these two together. And mix them as well as you can. this part out. Let's see. Okay. So, we're going to use the first one here. Oh, no. Step, step back. You're going to want to make sure that this is open as far as it can be to not restrict the flow. But at the same time, you don't want it to come loose. See the little O-ring right there? Um, so I'm thinking... all the way down. These things are not the easiest to deal with, I guess. All right. And you blow through it to check your flow rate right there. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of this epoxy on a thread. Not a lot. Just a little bit. Try not to get that on that bull ring there. just there we go just barely put it on there I'm gonna go ahead and do that to all three of them and I'm going to not really bother you with all that so just a little bit of the epoxy right on the thread you don't want to clog any of the holes this will just help seal it up once again check the flow will be nice and sealed. All right, we'll start with the cap for the bottle. I'm going to go ahead and push this into the hole. Try not to uh, push down on your little cap here. 
And we're going to leave a little bit of space. If you can see that, see how that line there. I'm going to go ahead and put some epoxy in that space. Try not to get it on the end there. Okay, so with some epoxy in that little spot, then I'm going to go ahead and crank it down the rest of the way. Now, there's going to be a little pool of epoxy around that whole meeting point there. That's going to give it a good seal. So I'm going to go ahead and test this again by blowing through that. Works great. So I'm going to go ahead and put some around that part too. Don't get it on the thread of the cap just around where it's coming out and try not to get it in the uh, the hole of the valve either because air will not come through it if there's epoxy in it it doesn't take a whole lot so you can see there's get the focus nice little puddle around the lip there and the same on the inside. You don't want any gaps. Like I said, you don't want a lot because you don't want it running off either. So that looks pretty good. I'm just going to set that down. Now, I'm going to do the cap now, the metal cap. I want to go ahead and get those seated. All right. I think I've got to uh, make the holes a little bit bigger. Please be careful when you do that. All right, that's a lot better. Now we need to make sure that this ring is gonna fit on there as we do it. Okay, perfect. We'll go ahead and put one one way and one the other way. Take this off. So once again, we're gonna raise them up just a little bit. See so I'm pulling them out so I can get a little bit of epoxy around each one down there. And I'm going to have to mix up a little more epoxy. It's a, it's a five minute epoxy. Before five minutes it starts getting a little gooey. So be careful too, I just got a little bit on there. Try not to get any around that lip. I'll go ahead and push that down. Push this one down. Make sure they're not leaning forward because it'll be tough to get the tubing on there. So lean it back just a little bit. There. And you can just look and make sure you got a nice little puddle going all the way around. If you don't, just use your popsicle stick kind of push some over. This one looks pretty good. And we are good. All right, now we're actually going to let this dry before we go putting any on the underside. Um, if it's wet and you put it upside down, it's all going to kind of run down. So we're just going to let that sit for a little while. I'm going to check on this one. See how it's actually coming down on this one? So we're going to clear that off because our hose isn't going to stick very well. Tubing. Try to remove that. might even, if you mix the epoxy, you might want to wait a minute before you uh, go doing it. Or if you do, just kind of keep rotating like this if you do it too soon. Um, check on this one. Oh, I, I didn't put it on the bottom of that one. 
So, yeah, in fact, it's even better if you just do one side and then wait to do the other side. How I'm doing here, there's no epoxy there yet. These ones, that side has it. I did both on this one and it's dripping down. It's probably done now. But, all right, so there's that. Next, we've got to work on the delivery system. You don't have to do anything now if you're going to use the uh, power head type with the Fentry. Um, there's really not a lot to that, but I need to take the gloves off. It's sticky. Silver. Now, I use the, uh, the sump, so I'm going to actually put the delivery system right in front of the intake on my pump my return pump. So I'm going to drill a hole here for the airline tubing and I'm going to attach it to a air stone and put it right in front of the intake there. So I need to figure out exactly where to go in front of that. Once again I got to get the right size hole. Use the gauge, find out exactly what size the hole is. And then with the airline tubing you actually want to go one size down. So this is 1564th. I'm going to go to 732nd. So pause that while I get the bit. Okay, I'm back. I didn't mention before, um, you want to use silicone airline instead of the regular vinyl. It holds up to the CO2 better. Um, the vinyl stuff gets really brittle pretty quick when it's exposed to the CO2. This will last longer. Alright, so we figured that the hole I need is the seven, yeah, seven thirty second. It's actually one size smaller than the air tube, and we want that because we don't want it slipping and sliding. We want to put it in here and make sure it stays where it's at. So just try to find the center of where you want it to go, and then try to drill it in there without oh, making a mess. There we go. Okay, see the little hole I put in there? Kind of hard to tell. I'm sure we can get this airline in there, and we can. I can actually take this off. All right, see how the airline's coming through? Now we could have just kind of spread these out and put the airline in there, but it would have pinched it too much and restricted the uh, the flow of the CO2 but this is about perfect okay now what we want to do next is you want to use an air stone but you have to make sure it is not going to fit into the impeller <laughs> um, if it was too small and it sucked in there you could uh, wind up with some troubles here so you want one that's going to actually just sit right in front of it like that any bubbles that come below it are going to get sucked up as they rise. Anything that's above it, I mean, it's okay. You don't have to catch every single one. So we're actually going to pull this through and you hook the air stone onto the tubing and then pull it back down. Now what we need to do is put this on here and you just kind of try to look through the holes. Let's see if I can get this kind of hard to see um, but you just make sure that the air stone is right in front of the uh, intake there and you cannot see it with that anyways it's in front of there so we're gonna leave this airline until we get it to where we need to go um, because we're going to need to cut it at the length to get to our bubble counter. So, let's see where we stand on the epoxy. Um, gloves. I'll pause it while I get ready again. Okay, I checked this. Um, it's tacky. It's not runny anymore, so we can go ahead and get ready to do the bottom side. Um, we're going to have to mix a little more epoxy for that. 
and when I say a little bit, that's really it's just going to take a little bit. So, equal parts. There's the resin to the hardener. So, um, don't feel that you need that you need to add extra hardener um, to make it cure better. It doesn't necessarily work like that, and you're just wasting it. Equal parts is all you need. Okay, so you mix it up, and then you're going to go around the bottom of each of these. Now, this is one of the most important spots where you don't want to overdo it. You do not want epoxy getting on this orange seal because it'll, it'll break the seal and CO2 will escape and not go into your system. And you don't want that. Doesn't take a lot, just make sure it's both on the uh, on the lid and going up onto the stems. You can see how it comes up a little bit there. But you want to make sure that it's all the way around each stem. And these look pretty good. You said it doesn't take a whole lot. See I little little bit ran up onto the thing. We want to try to get that off. There we go. Alright. So now this is going to sit. Once that cures, um, I'll turn it back on and I'll show you how to do the, uh, the depth. And I'll be back in a minute. Okay, the epoxy uh, is dry. It's not completely set up. It takes a few hours for it to completely set up. Now, when I did the epoxy at the bottom, I just kind of set it down and leave it, and I thought it was pretty gummy, but um, as you can see, it started dripping down. Um, had it come all the way down to this lip, I'd probably be starting over on this piece. So uh, it's best not to walk away from it, or if you do, make sure it's pretty uh, gummed up before you do. Um, if I was there watching it, I could have actually, you know, as it was sitting there, flipped it over and let it go back the other way or just held it for a few minutes. Anyways, next step is marking your inline and your outline. Now your inline, you're going to need to attach some tubing to the bottom of this and you're going to want it to go down at least three quarters of the way to the bottom. Um, I like to use this hard tubing. Um, normally I would have just drilled the hole and put this through it, but it's not that great of a fit. And then you get your the uh, tubing trying to kink up. So I'm actually going to use a little piece of airline tubing now to connect to cut this off, to connect to this, which is the the rigged tubing. Um, my hole's kind of crunched in there from snipping it. So I'm trying to open that back up. Okay. So I'm going to hook this to the tube, to the hard line. And the reason I like to use the hard line instead of the, uh, the blue tubing is because you can actually see the level um, while it's in here because this is going to be submerged underwater. And, uh, that's going to be your bubble counter, so you can actually see how many bubbles are coming out of this tube um, per second. It's not like you can really adjust it because uh, this is a low pressure system. If you try to restrict the flow of this, um, you can wind up with a nice little uh, mess, I guess. Um, we are using a plastic bottle, which could, I guess, ultimately explode. Um, I can't foresee that happening, but you just shouldn't do it. So anyways, we want to put this on, put it on our inline, connect it. Because if you're using clear tubing, you could use just regular clear aquarium airline tubing as well um, and stick it under there. But 
I don't like to use that just because it, it gets yellow or turns white if it's under the water for long. It doesn't last long with the CO2. Anyway, so I'm going to put this in there and it's too long. So I need to kind of estimate here and cut it. It's about three quarters of the way down. So I'm going to cut right about there. Snip that off. Okay, I'm going to try to kind of spread that back out because it really closed that hole up. Um, I'm going to pause this. I'm going to actually use a nail and stick it in this hole because it pinched it down pretty good. It's going to restrict the flow. So I will be right back. Okay, I went to the garage and I uh, was looking for the nail to uh, open this hole back up. And I actually found my scribe or my center punch. Um, that's what I should have used to make the indent on here to drill instead of my uh, little Phillips screwdriver. Um, Navy taught me to use the right tool for the dog. Anyways, so here we go. It's not quite three quarters of the way down, probably about two thirds, sorry, which will be enough. Um, I'm not gonna set this up and get it going yet. I'm gonna give this a day to cure. Um, so anyways, we're gonna, we're gonna fill this about two thirds of the way up so this will be sticking down into the water. We're just going to fill it with normal tap water. Um, and this is going to go on our CO2 bottle. Yeah. Grab one real quick. All right. This one's just the, uh, the gelatin and the sugar mix. Um, I don't have the yeast in here yet. This is just, I took it out of the fridge. It's warming up and I have some yeast um, proofing. So anyways, this is gonna connect on there. We're gonna hook our airline tubing from this. We'll hook it on here. And like I said, I made sure that these were all the way open, these valves on all of them that I, I used here. And then I used a little bit of that epoxy to seal that thread, just so I don't have to worry about it ever coming loose. And I tested it by just kind of blowing into the hole and then making sure it was freely coming through there. Did that on all three of them. Okay, so you're gonna hook your airline tubing to this. Make sure it's on there good. And I'm going to use a check valve between my CO2 bottle and my bubble counter. And you make sure that it's going the right way because it needs to flow from here to there. Um, most of them have a little arrow. If they don't, just blow in it and see which way you can blow. If you try to blow opposite, it's not gonna work. If it does, it's bad. You need to throw it out. Okay. So I'm just going to have this. It doesn't really matter where you put it, just as long as it's between here and your bubble counter. Okay, I'm not going to cut this other piece yet because it all depends on where I'm going to put it. So when you do this and you swap your bottles out for the new one, you basically just hold the cap and then you spin the bottle instead of trying to spin the cap. Okay, so this, I'm gonna wind up putting it to here, into your inline, um, and this is gonna be underwater because I'm gonna fill it to the, about right there. So the CO2 is gonna go from here into this, down the tube, and then you're gonna see the bubbles come up um, as they come out of the tube. And then, since this isn't going underwater, you're gonna get the gas to come out. And you're gonna go from your outline and you're gonna put another check valve here. It's just a double safety. Um, so you're gonna want another check valve outside of the bubble counter. So you got one before it comes in and one when it comes out. And then you're gonna run it to your supply. 
which is either going to be an overflow pump or a uh, power head pump. And like I said, with this one, you would put it in where the ventry valve goes. That normally you would like stick this above the water and it'll suck air and mix it in. Um, but what we would do is instead of having your little valve thing there, you would just take your line from your bubble counter and hook it directly into this. And this will be submerged into the aquarium. And this will just mix it down and point it down as far as you can so it stays, the bubbles will stay underwater as long as possible. Um, you want as much contact time as you can with the water. Um, and that pretty much sums it up. But what I'm gonna actually do is I'm gonna take you into the uh, front here. I have one set up on my 300 gallon tank and I'll basically run you through it and show you how it works in that one. All right? Okay, so I'm at the 300. I'm gonna show you uh, exactly how we got the CO2 system um, running here. Okay. Start you over here where it starts. <clears throat> right here we have the uh, the gelatin and sugar with the CO2 mixture in it, or the yeast. Um, it starts here, comes up. Here's one of the check valves I told you. Check valve will go into our bubble counter here. Um, you can see the bubbles that are coming out of there. Um, that's why I like to use that clear tube because let's just say it wasn't going yet. I could see where the level was at inside that tube to know if it's, you know, coming out or whatever. So anyways, it goes in that tube. It comes up into the space here. Then it comes out of that out port. And then it comes up here. There's the next check valve. And then it's going over here into the sump. <clears throat> right. So from here, we've got it going down and it comes into my pump here. So I showed you on the other one, I drilled the hole. This one I actually used another piece of that rigid, rigid tubing. Um, and that goes right down into the front of the intake, the power head, or the uh, air stone. So it goes then there through the tube, up, and it comes out the side. Um, <clears throat> the tank's kind of dirty because I just fed a little while ago. <clears throat> Excuse me. But a lot of this stuff you see moving around <clears throat> is actually little CO2 bubbles. They're uh, coming out of that. There's another one in the back you can barely see. Um, and then there's one over here on the side, all coming from the same tube. But those are little bubbles. Now, if I shake this up, there's actually a little more than normal, but if I shake this, you'll see a lot more bubbles. See how fast they're coming out? If I follow that through, see how much more bubbles are coming out of there now? And the plants just love that stuff between the nutrients. Um, the sand really sucks for plants. It's not even real sand, it's um, ceramic coated quartz crystals. And uh, there's like six or seven different colors I had mixed together to make this. It's absolutely gorgeous sand, um, but it sucks for plants. It doesn't really compact. Um, it moves too easily and the plants really can't take root. Those are the only rooted plants we have. Um, there's a few swords in there, but as you can see, they're not growing. They've been in there for quite a while. So the floating plants do pretty good. Um, we got a couple pieces of uh, water lettuce. Um, that's what these big root systems are. They haven't been in there very long, so I don't know how well they're gonna do or if they'll even do well. And then over here we have Water Sprite. Um, there's several bundles of it. That's what that root system is there. 
here and then we have this stuff I don't even know what it's called I'm not really that much of a plant guy but this here um, I kind of got that wrapped around there's some more right there um, I've got it wrapped around I got a piece of driftwood that's up top it actually does normally float but I tied it to the top so it can't drift around so anyways I got that that green plant I guess they're all green kind of lassoed around that and that's what keeps the water sprite from flowing into the overflows here it's just kind of like a rope tied around it but it's a rope of plants anyways even if things did root in here well all these big severums and stuff they just tear that stuff right out when they decide they uh, want to lay eggs they rearrange the furniture the way they would like to um, so anyways there's the do-it-yourself co2 system um, the one that I just made on video is going to go in um, T's tank it's a 72 bow front and uh, we just actually changed it out this weekend to be uh, plants um, I'll run over there real quick and show it to you um, brand new and then we'll show you like in a month or so as it gets established